What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, first, before I start today's subject, what I want to talk about, um, I have to say this. Some of you guys are straight bitches, female dogs. Um, my last video, and trust me, I'm not phased by it. I'm just addressing it. But my last video, I covered uh, post-fight Yadimo Rigondeaux versus Nonito Donaire. As you guys, if you watched it, you'll know it was pretty much a shutout. Rigondeaux completely outclassed his opponent. And some of the people leaving comments on YouTube and whatnot are in such denial. It's okay to lose. It's okay to... It's not like Nonito Donaire was undefeated. Me personally, I thought Donaire was going to beat Rigo. But I have no problem having two sets of eyes. I'm not Stevie Wonder. And I have no problem admitting that Rigo was a better person on this night. And that's what it is. He obviously had more tricks up his sleeve. He had more on his, like, um, under his arsenal of what he would do. And I'm seeing excuse after excuse. Just admit defeat and live to fight another day. You, it doesn't mean you have to join the Rigo bandwagon. It doesn't mean you have to abandon Nonito Donaire. But just be real. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of comments, man. And somebody actually disliked, I got a lot of likes, but somebody disliked the video. Like, all I do was keep it real with what I seen with my own two eyes. And I'm sure a lot of people, including HBO staff, Roy Jones Jr., who, another person, if you look at Roy Jones, he has interviews before this fight. You can catch him on YouTube. They were asking him who he thought would win. He, too, thought Nonito Donaire was going to be victorious, but he's still fighter enough. He still has enough integrity to admit that hey i was wrong rigo showed up and showed out and proved everybody wrong or proved me wrong or whatever and some of you guys just have a really hard time doing that so i just had to get that out there um i don't care like, at the end of the day i don't know nonito donaire personally i don't know rigging out personally it's just a game it's a competition and the person who was destined to win won the end i'll still watch both fighters i still have respect for both fighters some of you guys need to learn how to take losses. Um, Michael Jordan has a really good quote. I don't know it verbatim, but he basically said, um, I became great not because I won every single game, but because I persevered through the losses. It's something to that effect. And, I mean, that's part of the game. That's part for most people, unless you're Rocky Marciano or somebody who just goes undefeated. It happens. It's just how you bounce back from it. Anyway, um, I did want to talk about top rank. I've been saying this for a while. I slowly see HBO slash top rank because that's the biggest promotional company that HBO is currently dealing with. I see them in some deep waters. One, I said this when Golden Boy first, uh, when it was first announced that Golden Boy was no longer um, doing fights or there is no longer a partnership between HBO and Golden Boy. I see that being a huge disadvantage for HBO based on the fact that Golden Boy, they have some great older fighters, people with older careers, and they also have a lot of up-and-coming talent that um, could do great things in the sport as their careers progress. Gary Russell Jr.'s of the world, Leo Santa Cruz, you still have Abner Mars, Adrian Broners, Keith Thurman. There's a lot of young talent who are emerging and starting to build their brand and, and make their name. I mean, I don't know everyone that I just listed. I don't know what's going to happen next for them as they step up to new weight classes and bigger challenges, but there's still a, a lot of talent in that pool of fighters. And then you also have people like Josito Lopez, Marcos Maidana, and just different people like that who are at a consistent level and consistently putting on fan-friendly fights. you got young fighters like Canelo, 22, Austin Trout. They have a big showdown. I just see it being a problem because now I really see it being a problem. Look at top rank. Um, look at who fights with top rank. You got people like Pacquiao, Marquez, great fighters, yet they're pondering retirement. People are starting to to question how many more fights they have in them. How many fight? You know what I mean? Is Marquez going to fight at 41, 43? I mean, in the lower weight divisions, I mean, 147 is not that low, but lower than like somebody like Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins is 48, yet. It's not as fast paced. The lower the weight division, usually the fast pace, the faster the pace of the fight, the more punches thrown, etc., etc. But when you get to like cruiserweights and um, middleweights, super middleweights, and things like that, usually the output of punches are, are slowed down. So people like Marquez, um, they've been in wars, they've been in in, in fights with 
a thousand punches thrown and whatnot. So two of the prominent stars are pondering retirement in the near future. Then you have people like um, Kelly Pavlik, who retired. You also have Randall Bailey, brutally knocked out. We haven't heard from him. Uh, I never thought he was all that. I thought his his record was based on who he fought for the most part. Um, and then now Nonito Donaire just lost to Yadimo Rigondeaux, which was someone that he might have been taken lightly, somebody that he was overlooking for some time. So where does that go from here? Like, I mean, he lost. It was a, it was a fight um, where he lost his belt. So does he move up and wait? Uh, the future is uncertain for him. People are going to obviously question this match, even though you can't really take much away from uh, Nonito because he at least gave Rigadao an opportunity, only 11 fights into his career professionally. He gave him the opportunity, so that's definitely commendable that uh, Donaire was willing to step up to the plate and put that at risk. Um, but anyway, I mean, look at that. A loss is a loss. A loss is usually not... It's not going to usually build you fans. Unless it's a loss like Ruslan Provotnikov versus Timothy Bradley. That loss helped Ruslan Provotnikov. Because it showed that he was a warrior. He was from overseas in Russia. A lot of people in the States didn't know who he was. And he put on an impressive performance against somebody like Timothy Bradley who has a great resume. And almost got Timothy Bradley out of there. So I think losses like that will do more than Nonito's loss. Or a loss like Gabriel Rosado stepping up and wait, agreeing not to fight at a catch weight, and like lasting, I forget, like seven rounds against Gennady Golovkin, a feared puncher at the higher weight. Um, losses like that, I think they helped him because as you can see, Gabriel Rosado is fighting an up-and-coming money team prospect, J. Leon Love, on a huge fight card, which is Mayweather versus Guerrero. Also has Abner Mars versus Daniel Ponce de Leon. So if it's a loss like that, I don't think it negatively affects. I think it would impact your career positively based on your performance. However, Nonito's loss, he that was he didn't look good. I mean, that's the short and sweet of it. He didn't really look great. He didn't do anything beautiful to me. And he actually, based on how uh, Rigondeaux fought, he actually looked worse than I've seen him in a lot of fights. So that's not one of the types of losses where it's like highly competitive. And even though he lost, you still give him some credit. Hell, this is just my opinion. It's going to be controversial. Some of you might not agree with it. But Chavez Jr. doing what he did in that 12th round and ending really strong and almost, almost um, changing his fate by knocking Martinez out. I think that did more for Chavez Jr., even though he got the shit beat out of him for 11 and a half rounds, just because he was able to rally and really do something um, shocking in that 12th round, even though he didn't get Martinez out of there, I think even that does more for Chavez Jr., who also has a fan base, just because when he finally decided to take a stand and enough is enough, he almost succeeded. Whereas Nonito Donaire, he did have one knockdown, but it was more of a flash knockdown, and Rigondeaux kind of got right up. Um, and I, in my opinion, I don't think Donaire ever really just took a stand. He, he always seemed gun shy once he seen the level of talent, speed and power and counter punching abilities of Rigondeaux. So that's just my opinion. As far as top rank, I don't really know where they go. You look at it. Nonito Donaire just lost to, this is a fight that people have been talking about for a while. So he just lost to, um, I guess the toughest test of his career, which a lot of people felt it was, and he convincingly lost. Uh, Brandon Rios, even though it was a more competitive fight, he lost as well to Mike Alvarado. And a lot of people think they, they've seen vulnerabilities. And this is not taking anything away. I'm not switching sides. I like Brandon Rios. I like Nonito Donaire. But I'm saying at, for a top rank, who's their moneymaker? Who is their Floyd Mayweather? Who is their Canelo or Austin Trout? Because whether Canelo wins or Austin Trout, one of them is going to remain undefeated and their star power will grow. Nonito was on an incredible win streak since, I think, 2001. He only lost one fight. Now he lost again. So it's kind of at a stage where you have to pick up the pieces and go back to the drawing board, like he said in his post-fight interview. And 
decide, make some decisions. And I'm sure he's going to take some time off to be with his uh, pregnant wife and newborn son. So, like I said, as far as top rank, I don't really know who's going to be their everlasting star. Um, that's just my opinion. So let me know what you guys think. Top rank versus Golden Boy, Showtime versus HBO. Where does Nonito Donaire go from here? Where does uh, Rigondel go from here? Leave a comment. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off.